Well, that's a huge question. Well, what's my patent solution to fixing democracy? Yes. Yeah. Goodness. I think we have to distinguish between liberal democracy and illiberal democracy. We kind of fell into a state, uh, I mean, the democratic countries and, and the, the West in general, uh, fell into a state of uh, uh, relaxed uh, hedonism of some sort. We need to first understand as to what are the reasons as to why this has actually happened. The reason that this has actually happened is very clearly uh, that there has been an economic disparity. We need to go to the fundamentals of how humans think and operate. We are designed to survive and the definition of survivalhood is a temporal circumstantial definition but it boils down for us to economic fairness. I think first of all there has to be a real uh, revisiting of the dominant economic policies of the last 40 years. We thought that little by little, uh, if we globalize the markets, uh, we can use the, the free market as a vehicle for uh, the liberal democratic values, uh, which um, uh, step by step will be introduced into autocratic environments. Uh, and the people will demand uh, more liberalization of, of their institutions. Illiberal democracy is a kind of takeover or an occupation of what were really potent ideas started in the Enlightenment. Well, what we saw was exactly the opposite. We, we basically uh, made the autocrats wealthy and gave them the possibility to, to strike back. Well, if democracy means inclusion, we have not included half of the world's population um, on a systematic level. Over time, Americans become less and less engaged in democracy, as demonstrated by voting. Turnout generally is going down. We've got a problem for representative democracy at the moment um, because the, the idea of representative democracy was about delegating very, very complicated decisions and trade-offs, complex trade-offs. Um, people now seem to want very, very quick, simple solutions. And so the democracies that we have right now are half-baked, if not a third baked. Less and less feel as if their vote matters in the United States and elsewhere. They feel there are powerful forces that are working to make their vote matter less. They feel as if uh, their vote might get hacked. Um, they feel as if there might be voter fraud, which is certainly a narrative that's being used by some forces to further delegitimize democracy. Now, there is something very central to what is happening. Like One is this whole idea of uh, that we are going to make our countries great again. Uh, the th thing of closing the borders. The third is about immigration. First, of course, uh, first challenge is uh, how, to, how to deal with the question of migration. Uh, democracies need a common approach uh, towards, uh, towards migration issues. Pluralism is critical for the functioning of democracy and there is no democracy without strong pluralism. I think we need to strengthen the institutions that actually undergird the entire democracy, which is in particular the election systems, and make sure people know that if, um, if they turn out to vote that it's going to be an easy, convenient experience and that their vote matters, that it matters beyond the outcome of that particular election, but for um, democracy as a whole, they're really demonstrating their investment in governance, in making government work for them. A reintroduction of the reality of how democracy functions. Democracy functions, yes, as an elite, but democracy functions on the basis of legitimacy. Legitimacy lies in the citizens. That's where it comes from. And so if you don't deal with that, that basic foundational idea and role of citizenship, you can't have democracy. We've been following a, 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 an integrated national and, eco, a, and international economic policy, which is a denial of the possibility of democracy for 40 years. It's not surprising where we, where we are. So I was thinking of is why not go back to some historical experiences, uh, late medieval, early modern Italian cities had not elected councils, but councils randomly chosen of people who served for a relatively short space of time. And so that was also designed to limit corruption because you couldn't be sure that you would be reappointed, or in some cases you weren't reappointed. But it forces you to think about the complexity of issues, and it forces you not only to think about them, but to discuss with other people. And part of the story about democracy, I think, is continual discussion. So getting a format which involves a continuous engagement is, in my view, really essential for the rescuing of 
the democratic process. Second, uh, autocrats have weaponized corruption in a, in a really efficient way. And uh, what, uh, what we need to look at is basically uh, how to apply better the principles of transparency and accountability in our economy. Well, since I'm an editor cartoonist, I figured I had to draw it. I say that we should get money out of politics because, you know, obviously the person, the average person isn't being listened to because money is dictating who our representatives are, um, are listening to, you know, so I say get money out. Getting behind or securing the continuation of a vibrant press, it means education and education in its fullest form to meet the demands of new technology. Education is key, which means democracy is one thing, which describes a system. But someone has to fill the system and to make the right decision to deal with the freedom you will get in a democracy. I think the question is really how we can educate, train people to deal with and to use democracy benefiting society. There's a second element that we need to address, which is critical thinking through profound analytical education. And third, uh, we are dealing still with the, with the crisis, with the financial crisis of 2008 and 2009. Uh, it is clear that our financial systems need better regulation in order to avoid irresponsible, um, uh, irresponsible behavior on the part of financial, in financial institutions. You have to solve this problem through solving the problems of capitalism. If I'm not able to solve capitalism, if I'm not able to solve disparity, I'm not able to solve the challenges that we actually face today. In fact, if you actually go on to debating in terms of like there is this whole huge information or information asymmetry that is actually happening or wrongful information that is going, it is an outcome rather than actually the reason for as to what is, what, what is really happening. So get the capitalistic system right. Enterprises will have to understand that social objectives and economic objectives have to come together. So the role of the enterprise is far bigger uh, than anything or any other time in the history of this world. Democracy will always have perceived problems. This is not the worst we have seen it. This will not be the worst we will see it. But it's okay, we'll go, we'll go through it. We cannot just say that it is going to be civil society or devolve everything to the, to the politicians. We as people are custodians of the whole thing or the idea of democracy, our freedoms, and this is what we have to look at.